Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and in the series of interpretation of statute, we were discussing rules of interpretation and in that series, we have already discussed two very important rules of interpretation in my last two classes. That is the literal rule of interpretation and the golden rule of interpretation. In my today's class, I am going to discuss the third and one of the most interesting rule of interpretation that is mischief rule of interpretation which is famously known as Hayden's rule of interpretation. We are going to understand the rule, we are going to discuss as many as 10 case laws, we are also going to understand different names of mischief rule of interpretation as well as advantages and disadvantages of mischief rule of interpretation. I hope that gives everything for you as concerned with exams and with that I am taking you to the first slide. Before getting into the discussion of mischief rule, let's quickly have the recap of what is literal rule and golden rule because from there we can take the context. When it comes to literal rule, we have to read the statute as is. We have to read the statute as is if the literal meaning is plain, clear and unambiguous. However, if the same is not so, then the golden rules comes into picture. If any of the word used in the statute leads to absurdity, repugnance, inconvenience, hardship, injustice or evasion to the extent of removing such absurdity, repugnance, inconvenience, hardship, injustice or evasion the court can modify such words which is golden rule and then comes mischief rule mischief rule is all about what was the reason for law before i get into mischief rule i would like to tell the story of a brahmin and a cat what is this story the story goes this way there was three brahmins one is mr a the other one is mr b and the third one is mr c now A is the father and his son is B and B's son is C. That way C is the grandson of A. One fine day A dead. Now B has to do the rituals for his father and when he was doing the rituals there was a cat in home which was doing lot of disturbance. Now what did B do? He asked the family members to tie that cat. Now he completed all the rituals and that was over and after few years B dead. Now C the son of B has to complete all the rituals and while he was doing that rituals there was the cat the same cat and he asked the family members to tie that cat and D saw the same. D is the son of C. Now that ritual was over and over a period of time C dead. Now the cat was also dead. So what did D do? He asked the family members to find a cat and then tie it and he completed the rituals after tying the cat. Now where did the story go? B tied the cat because the cat was irritating. But D tied the cat because he didn't know anything about the history. He thought tying the cat itself is part of the ritual. That is what happens when we don't know the background of any law and that's where exactly the concept of mischief rule of interpretation gets in. Now this is not a legal example, this is just to set an ambience for this entire discussion and with that I am moving to next slide where we will understand what is mischief rule of interpretation. As I said earlier, mischief rule is also known as Hayden's rule of interpretation. Now before we get into the discussion of what is the rule, let us understand the background of Hayden's case. Now this was the time that is during 16th century there was a big clash between the church and the crown. Now church want to lead by themselves and the crown wanted the entire control. At that circumstances, lot of religious institutions had lot of property with them and crown wanted to take control of those properties. One of such property was manor of Watery or the Watery College. Now there was a warden 
who gave this property to several people. He gave on copyhold tenancy to Ware and his son for life. He also gave tenant at will of him to Mr. S and G. And he also gave the same property on will of 80 years to Mr. Hayden. After completion of all this, the property would have gone to the crown. This was the background. Now comes the new law that is the Suppression of Religious Houses Act 1535 which is also known as Act of Dissolution or the Statute 31 of Henry VIII. Now when we see this entire manner of Oteri or whatever Warden has done, there is a lot of doubling of estates which was not okay as per the new law because people were doing all this kind of transfer to ensure that the property is reaching to crown as late as possible and crown wanted to remove such mischief that is why the law has come. Now what happened here in the Hayden's case? The same thing was getting repeated. The people or the warden wanted to hold back the property as long as possible and the law that is suppression of religious houses act wanted to curtail it and there comes the role of the judges and this is a very important statement which I have mentioned in the green box that judges shall suppress the mischief and advance the remedy. I repeat judges shall suppress the mischief and advance the remedy. Now this is not all that they have told. They have told four important aspects that judges need to remember before going to decide any of the case and that is what we need to understand as the heart of this entire discussion which is available in my next slide. What was those four important aspects told by Lord Loke in the case? That is what was the common law or the what was the earlier law or what was the earlier condition is the first thing that the court needs to understand and then what mischief or defect it didn't answer. Like for example if there was a law in that law what was the lackings or if there was no law then we have to start from new law only by understanding what was the situation before the law that is the second item and then comes the third item what is the remedy in the new law to cure such mischief. Now the new law has come. Maybe it has replaced the old common law or it is an independent new law. How that is curing the mischief? That is what we need to understand. That is the third item and the last item. What was the true reason for such remedy? That is the fourth important aspect that we need to understand and judges shall suppress the mischief and advance the remedy. That is the responsibility of the judges. That is all about Hayden's rule. Now this rule is also known as mischief rule, it is also known as beneficial construction and it is also known as purposive construction. These are the different names of the mischief or the Hayden's rule and with that I am giving you some more facts about the Hayden's case and then we are moving further for the discussion of 9 other case laws. Here in this slide I have given little more information as to Hayden's case including the full case law name and all the other important aspects discussed and this is for your screenshot with that I am moving to next slide. As I told in the beginning we are going to discuss as many as 10 case laws and among that 10 case laws we have already discussed the first one that is R versus Hayden. We are going to discuss Smith vs. Hughes, Royal College of Nursing vs. DHSS, Ranjit Udeshi vs. State of Maharashtra, Mango Singh vs. Election Tribunal, RMDC vs. The Union of India, Bengal Immunity Company vs. State of Bihar, Kanwa Singh vs. Delhi Administration, Corkery vs. Carpenter and Gorman vs. Standen. Let's move to Smith vs. Hughes. The second case law that we are discussing here is Smith vs. Hughes. What happened here? Before 1959, in England, prostitutes used to molest and solicit men on the public road. Now, this was disturbing the people 
and to prohibit such molestation or soliciting in the public road the parliament brought a new law by name street offenses act 1959 now as for the section 1 of this particular act no prostitute can solicit or molest any man on the public road to ensure that the traffic is not disturbed however one prostitute by name mary teresa smith was sitting in the balcony of her house and by tapping the window etc she used to make noise and attract men for the purpose of prostitution now the case was filed against her and the court said it is not just on the road if they come and disturb the public will be considered as molesting and soliciting for prostitute even if you are sitting at your home or balcony etc and trouble people that will also be covered under section 1 of the street offenses act 1959 because the very objective of the act itself is to stop any kind of molestation or soliciting of men on the road now that is the very important aspect discussed here what was the mischief here the prostitute ladies were disturbing the men on the road and to remove that the street offenses act came now if you are sitting outside the road and trouble that will also become the part of the section 1 because the very objective of the law itself for that that is what we need to understand please read all the headings i have given here i have explained them very clearly for the purpose of your notes and exams and with that i am moving to the next case law The third case law that we are discussing here is Royal College of Nursing versus DHSS. This is a classical case for the mischief rule of interpretation. Remember, this is an English case. I repeat, this is not an Indian case but an English case. What happened in England during eighteen sixty one? An act came that is the Offences Against the Person Act. and as for this offences against the person act abortion was an offence now during 1861 the medical field was not that developed and the abortion could have been risky for both mother and child that is why it was considered as an offence but by 1967 what happened medical field got lot of technology and with technology there were lot of improvement and with that a law also came in england by the name the abortion act 1967 now as per this act that is the abortion act 1967 a medical registered practitioner or a medically registered practitioner who can be called as doctor can carry out abortions provided certain conditions were satisfied now as per the abortion act 1967 abortion became legal but there were certain conditions that is need to be observed now what was the mischief here why royal college of nursing put a case because by then there were two types of abortions available one hormonal abortion the second one surgical abortion now hormonal abortion was done up to 9 weeks or 63 days by giving mere tablets and this was been given by nurses also whereas surgical abortion was allowed from 9 weeks to 24 weeks but this was done by the registered medical practitioner that is doctor now the question here from the nurses was we were giving hormonal abortion tablets and with the new law we were been prohibited because the law says this is to be done by a medically registered practitioner that is doctor but here the court said it is okay to give hormonal abortion tablets by the nurses also because the law came into existence to avoid any kind of risk during the abortion but hormonal abortion by then proved that it is safe up to 9 weeks and that can be done by nurses also and later of course the 9 weeks to 24 weeks the surgery to be made by doctors only because that was brought to protect the mother and of course child here we are not saving uh, but to protect the mother 
that is what discussed under Royal College of Nursing versus DHSS. The next case law, Ranjit Udeshi versus State of Maharashtra should be a familiar case if you have already watched my presentation on the literal rule of interpretation. Yes, this case law is repeated. We have discussed there also and we are discussing it here also again. Why? Because this is connected to mischief also. Now, what happened here? Ranjit Udeshi had a book stall and in his book stall, he had certain amount of obscene books. Now, he got arrested for the same and when asked, Ranjit Udeshi told that I was not aware that these books had obscene contents or these were banned by government of India or they were not supposed to be sell to the people below 20 years as under section 293 of Indian Penal Code. His contention was I never had any intention. That means there is absence or there was absence of mens rea. However, court held that here mens rea is not important. The very purpose of this particular section is to prevent anybody selling any kind of obscene books to the underage people or the below 20 years people and that was the mischief which wanted to be prevented from section 293 of Indian Penal Code and if anybody further sells that means the mischief is not addressed. So Ranjit Udeshi got convicted and that is what we need to understand from this particular case law. The next case law that we are discussing here is Mango Singh versus the election tribunal which is again a repeated case law because we have discussed this particular case law while discussing golden rule of interpretation. What happened here? Mango Singh won the municipal board election and while he was preparing for celebration, the election tribunal called him and said, you are a disqualified candidate, hence you have not won the election. Now, Mango Singh got upset and angry and he asked the reason for the same and the election tribunal says that while filing the nomination, you have not paid municipalities tax. That is why your nomination itself is disqualified. Mangu Singh says, I have paid the tax at later stage. But the tribunal says the very objective of 13D of the UP Municipalities Act 1916 is to ensure that anyone who is contesting in the election should complete their legal liabilities and participate in the election. Now, the objective of the act was to ensure that nobody commits mischief or anyone who is contesting the election will complete the legal liability and participate in the election. Now, to prevent such mischief of not paying the tax, that particular section was in existence and you have not completed that liability and that is why your nomination itself was disqualified. Hence, you have not won the result. That is what discussed in Mango Singh versus the election tribunal. This slide is for your screenshot. Kindly take screenshot for the purpose of notes. And with that, I am moving to the next slide. The next case law is RMDC versus the Union of India, which is a discussion about price competition. And here the Price Competition Act 1955 was discussed when the central brought certain amount of limitations on the price competitions like any competition were called a crossword price competition, a missing word price competition, a picture price competition or by any other name in which price are offered for the solution of any puzzle based upon the building up arrangement combination or permutation of letters, words or figures. Now the central act brought certain amount of limitations on the same. Now a lot of people put a file under the article 191G. However, here the Supreme Court of India said that only if there are competitions where substantial level of skill is involved, those will not come under price competition and if any other price competition like lottery, etc., that will be considered as price competition and to prevent such mischief and to prevent people investing and losing money on them, 
there will be restriction as under price competition act 1955 that is what decided in this particular case law the next case law is bengal immunity company limited versus state of bihar bengal immunity company limited was working from bengal and they were working under the bengal finance sales tax act now they were paying all taxes in bengal and they were supplying medicine all over india now bihar put a tax on them under bihar sales tax act now the bengal immunity company limited approached the supreme court and it was held by the supreme court of india that article 286 of indian constitution was made to avoid the mischief of multiple taxation and to preserve the free flow of trade now if every state start to put tax again and again there will be no free flow of trade and the very objective of article 286 was made to avoid the mischief of multiple taxation that is what discussed here and in this case law chief justice sr das said it was to cure this mischief of multiple taxation and to preserve the free flow of interstate trade or commerce in the union of india regarded as one economic unit without any provincial barrier that the constitution makers adopted article 286 in the constitution that is what discussed in this particular case law the next case law conversing versus delhi administration is very interesting there were lot of stray cattle which were bothering the traffic and the city now the delhi administration decided to catch those stray cattle when i say stray cattle it is cows etc which were on the road and everywhere in the city so what did delhi administration do it sent its employees to catch those stray cattle under section 417 of the delhi municipal corporation act 1957 now these employees went and they caught about 25 to 30 cattle by the end of the day and when they were planning to return the owners of those cattle came and said they are the owner of the cattle and these cattle are not abandoned. Now the employees showed their ID card and told that they are public servants and they have completed their job and the owners if they want their cattle they have to follow certain procedure and take them back. But owners were in no mood to listen to the public servants. Rather, they beat the public servants and took their cattle back. Now, the case came in front of the court. Now, court said the Delhi Municipal Corporation Act 1957 under Section 417 and Section 418.1, the public servants have done a right job. Abandoned doesn't mean to be like the cattle doesn't have any owner. It means that the cattle is moving anywhere and everywhere without any condition or without any supervision. Now, please read the entire section which is very beautiful. I have brought it for the purpose of notes, but I cannot spend all time reading them. So, please read them. So, you have to follow the procedure to take them back and you have not done. Over and above, you have beat a public servant. And when asked why, they told that this is for their private defense. Court said go to hell. There was no private defense question at all. Nobody tried to harm you. They were just catching your cattle and as per under section 99 of the Indian Penal Code, even under private defense, you cannot harm a public servant until and unless such public servant was about to kill you or cause you grievous hurt. That is what discussed here. And the entire purpose of section 417 and section 418 to stop the mischief by leaving the stray cattle on the road and that is what they were preventing and if you are trying to stop that you are punishable and all the three uh, whatever accused were there they were being punished accordingly. The next case law is very interesting where section 12 of the licensing act 1872 was discussed which is Corkery versus Carpenter where a person was riding his bicycle in drunken state in the highway. Now he got caught and he said cycle is not a carriage but the court applied the mischief rule holding that a riding a bicycle was within the mischief of the act as the defendant 
represented a danger to himself and others on the road who were was using road they were also in risk because of his drunken stage so the carriage will include cycle also and the person got punished under section 12 of the licensing act 1872 the last case law that we are discussing before getting into advantages and disadvantages of mischief rule of interpretation is gorman versus standen here what happened a stepmother and stepdaughter got arrested for running an illegal brothel. Now here the stepdaughter said she has no idea as to what was happening in the home and stepmother said she was the only one who was doing prostitution and hence it was not a brothel. But police said that they have witnessed that stepdaughter was assisting and helping in managing the entire activity and she was also participating in prostitution and hence they were covered and punished under section 33 of sexual offenses act 1956 as well as section 3 of the children and young persons act 1933 because young daughter of the stepmother was also sleeping inside the home here the illegal brothel was the mischief which the government wanted to stop but they have done that that is why they got punished before Nishan comes and say bye to you guys, let us discuss our last slide that is the advantages and disadvantages of mischief rule of interpretation. The first advantage here is the court can give focus to the parliament intention and secondly court can apply its mind while giving the judgment. Thirdly, court can take the count of scientific and social changes just like we discussed the abortion case that is possible here in the mischief rule of interpretation and court by applying mischief rule of interpretation can avoid unjust or absurd results that is the fourth advantage and fifth one is the court takes the external aid of interpretation's help and decides the case it can take the count of the background what was the scenario, what was the mischief, what was that the government wanted to suppress and give the remedy, all of that can be done and that is the fifth advantage. The sixth one is the law commission sees it as a far more satisfactory way of interpreting acts as opposed by the golden and literal rules and the last one is it helps to close any kind of loopholes. These are the seven advantages. Then comes the disadvantages. The first one here is the court may do error in understanding the parliament intention. That is the first risk that we have. And the second one, the judges may misuse this opportunity. That is the second risk we have. And the mischief rule of interpretation makes the law uncertain. That is the third disadvantages. And the fourth one is, this is a very old rule of interpretation. This came in the 16th century, so this may be an outdated rule of interpretation. The fifth one here is, court gets too much power under mischief rule of interpretation. Sixth disadvantage here is, this also breaks the separation of powers because here the judges get into the law itself and that is the sixth disadvantages and the last one is, while judges can bring their own views, sense of morality, etc., they may also bring prejudice, bias also. Now we say they bring sense of morality, they bring a lot of good views, there is a risk of they coming up with prejudice, bias, etc. That's the end of presentation. Let's see what Nishan has to say. <sighs> this is Mishti. And this is also Mishti. I don't get any punishment for that. With that, I'm concluding this session. Please subscribe our channel. Please like, share and comment our videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.